konvolusi. Integral konvolusi adalah operator pada sistem linear time invariant atau tak ubah waktu dalam waktu kontinu untuk mengetahui respon sistemnya. Respon sistem YT adalah konvolusi sinyal masukan XT dengan respon impuls HT. YT didefinisikan sebagai integral minus tak terhingga ke tak terhingga X tau HT kurang tau D tau di mana tau adalah variabel bebas prosedur integral konvolusi dari persamaan YT minus tak terhingga sampai tak terhingga X tau HT kurang tau D tau dapat kita lakukan dengan cara kita gambar sinyal X tau dan HT kurang tau sebagai fungsi variabel bebas tau. Yang kedua, mulai dengan nilai T besar dan negatif. Kemudian, kita tulis persamaan bantu WT fungsi dari tau. Kita perbesar nilai T, kita gerakkan T dikurang tau ke arah kanan sehingga WT fungsi tau berubah nilai T interval baru kemudian kita ulangi langkah 3 dan 4 untuk setiap himpunan pergeseran T integrasikan WT kurang tau dari tau minus tak terhingga sampai tau tak terhingga untuk mendapatkan YT sebagai contoh konvolusi unit step dengan eksponensial YT kita definisikan sama dengan integral X tau HT kurang tau D tau dimana input sinyal XT sama dengan unit step UT dan respon impuls eksponensial HT sama dengan E pangkat minus AT UT bisa kita gambar XT unit step dan HT hanya bernilai positif di T mulai dari 0 kemudian variabel bebas tau X tau dan kita gambar kemudian variabel H minus T kurang tau yaitu H tau yang dicerminkan seperti video berikut ini in exactly the same way. Continuous time convolution, we have the expression again, y of t is an integral with now x of tau and h of t minus tau. It has exactly the same kind of form as we had previously for discrete time convolution. And, and in fact, the mechanics of the continuous time convolution are identical. So here is our example with x of t equal to a unit step and h of t now a real exponential times a unit step. I show here x of t which is the unit step function. Here we have h of t which is an exponential for positive time and zero for negative time. Now, again, looking back at the expression for convolution, it's not x of t that we want, it's x of tau that we want, and it's not h of t or h of tau that we want, it's h of t minus tau. We plan to multiply these together and integrate over the variable tau and that gives us the output at any given time. If we want it at another time, we change the value of t as an argument inside this integral. So here we have x of t. Here we have h of t, which isn't quite what we wanted. Here we have x of tau, and that's fine. It's just x of t with t relabeled as tau. And now what is h of t minus tau, well, here's 
h of tau. And if we simply turn that over, here is h of t minus tau. And h of t minus tau is positioned then at tau equal to t. And as we change the value of t, that changed the position of this signal. And now we multiply these two together and integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity with h of t minus tau positioned at the appropriate value of t. Well, again, it's best really to see this example and get the notion of a, a signal being flipped and the two signals sliding past each other, multiplying and integrating by looking at it dynamically and observing how the answer builds up. Again, the input that we consider is a step input. And again, we'll use an impulse response, which is a decaying exponential. And to form the convolution, we want the product of x of tau, not with h of tau, but with h of t minus tau. So we want h of t time reversed, and then shift it appropriately depending on the value of t. Let's first just look at h of t minus tau for t positive, corresponding to shifting h of minus tau to the right. And here we have t increasing. Here is t decreasing. And we will want to begin the convolution with t negative, corresponding to shifting h of minus tau to the left. Now, to form the convolution, we want the product of these two. And for t negative, there are no non-zero contributions to the integral. And so the convolution will be 0 for t less than 0. On the bottom trace, we show the result of the convolution here for t negative. And for t less than 0, we will continue to have 0 in the convolution. Now, as t increases past 0, we begin to get some non-zero contribution in the product, indicated by the fact that the convolution, the result of the convolution, starts to build up. And as t increases further, we will get more and more non-zero contribution in the integrand. And so the result of the convolution will be a monotonically increasing function for this particular example, which asymptotically approaches a constant. And that constant will be proportional to the area under the impulse response because of the fact that we're convolving with a step input. Now let's carry out the convolution with an input which is a rectangular pulse. Again, an impulse response which is an exponential. And so to form the convolution, we want x of tau with h of t minus tau. h of t minus tau shown here for t negative. And again, to form the convolution, we take the integral of the product of these two, which again will be 0 for t less than 0. So the bottom trace shows the result of the convolution here shown as 0. And it will continue to be 0 until t becomes positive, at which point we build up some non-zero term in the integrand. Now, as we slide further, until the impulse response shifts outside the interval in which the pulse is non-zero, the output will build up. But here, we've now begun to leave that interval. And so the output will start to decay exponentially. And as the impulse response slides further and further, corresponding to increasing t, then the output will decay exponentially, representing the fact that there is less and less area in the product of x of tau and h of t minus tau. And asymptotically, 
this output will then approach zero. Uh, 